Assalamualaikum and a very good day everyone. Welcome to Civil Engineering Laboratory 2 SKAB 3012. My name is Bahari Nasir, your lab instructor. Here, I'm going to give a brief explanation on lab S1 portal 3. In this video, I'm going to cover the introduction building on the theoretical summary, the objective of the test, the apparatus, the experiment procedure, data collection, data analysis, and last, the discussion and conclusion. All right, so what is portal frame? So portal frame structure are designed to span between supports and rely on fixed joint with moment resisting capacity where the vertical supports connect to horizontal beam or classes. So typically can be seen in the warehouse, barns, and other places where the large open spaces are required at low cost. A portal frame is statically determined when the reaction forces can be determined from the static equilibrium equations. This requires the unknown reaction forces to be less or equal to 3. If not, the structure becomes statically indeterminate. And for a statically indeterminate water frame, the problem is to determine the horizontal thrust at the support. Once we know the horizontal thrust, so the bending moment of the water frame at any point can be determined. So there are several methods actually to solve the horizontal thrust. So one of them is the energy method. So this is the method that we are going to use in this test. The objective of the test will be first to determine the horizontal thrust of a symmetrical indeterminate portal frame under vertical load and under horizontal load, and last the combination of vertical and Horizontally, so we have three cases here. Secondly, to compare the test results against the theoretical values, and last, to prove the validity of superposition theory. So let's look at the uh, theoretical summary uh, of the portal frame. So this is the portal frame, the terminate structure to the degree, and the portal frame is subjected to point load at E. W1 here. And we can determine the horizontal thrust uh, using the minimum strain energy, the differentiation of U over H is equal to zero, where the U over dH is equal to the integrations of a uh, moment at X over EI times dM over dH to the X. By taking point A as the origin and the clockwise direction as positive, the moment M at any segment can be determined. So we have segment AC, segment CE, segment DE, and segment BD. Okay. Consequently, the stream energy equation DU over DH for each of the segment can be determined. So the, sum the summation of stream energy for all segments is set to zero for the du over dh for segment AC plus segment CE plus segment BD plus segment BE equal to zero. Okay. And from the calculation of uh, stream energy for all of the segments, so we get this equation. You can refer to your lab manual to see the details of the calculation. By solving these equations, therefore, we get the horizontal thrust H is equal to W1 over 12. And because of this uh, frame asymmetry, so the horizontal thrust at support A and the horizontal thrust at support B is similar. 
if the portal frame is subjected to horizontal load from to at point D to the horizontal load H truss can be determined using the same procedure. Before we get the horizontal truss H is equal to 0 0.5 times W2. If the portal frame is simultaneously subjected to both loading, vertical load W1 at E and the horizontal load W2 at D, so the horizontal thrust can be determined from the superposition theory. Therefore, the horizontal thrust is equal to W1 over 12 plus 0 0.5 times W2. This is from the vertical uh, load. This is horizontal thrust subjected to horizontal load. In order to conduct the experiment, these are the apparatus that we are going to use. As you can see here, so this is the portal frame. We have the weight holder and the masses. This is to Newton load, the dial gauge, and we need a ruler to measure the dimension of the frame. This is the setup for the portal frame. If you look here, the support A is pin, support B is roller, and point C, which is point E, and we have point D here. If you look at uh, support B, so the dial gauge is attached, and you need to set it to uh, zero by pressing the uh, air button. And the weight hanger also attached to the support B. So this is where uh, we have to we need to put the balance load so that the gauge uh, reading is back to zero. All right, the procedure for the experiment first we need to measure the width and the height of the portal frame. So we need to measure from C to D, from center to center, and the height of the frame from A to C. And then place the weight hanger at point E. This is point E. This is for case one for the vertical load. Then set the dial gauge reading to zero. Then apply the incremental vertical load to Newton at E for the vertical load. And consequently, you need to apply, put the horizontal load or balancing load until the dial gauge reading back to zero. So the horizontal load obtained from step four is taken as horizontal thrust. So we need to record the horizontal thrust or H test in table one A. So repeat step four and five by adding two Newton incremental to four six eight until plus Newton. And then record the horizontal thrust. So reduce the horizontal thrust uh, to decrease the vertical load. Uh, reduce the horizontal thrust for every two newton until the dial gauge back to zero. You calculate the average, and then you calculate the theoretical horizontal thrust. For case two, for portal frame subjected to horizontal load, so you need to repeat step two till six, but this time the load apply horizontally at point D. Okay. So record the horizontal thrust that obtained from uh, this step in table 1B. You calculate the average and then you calculate the theoretical horizontal thrust. And for case uh, 3, for the vertical and horizontal load, when the portal frame is subjected to this vertical and horizontal load, uh, you need to repeat step 2 till 6, uh, but you need to apply the vertical and horizontal load at E and D simultaneously. And the balancing load or the horizontal load uh, obtained from this test uh, is recorded in, uh, you need to record it in table 1C. Okay. Again, you need to calculate the average and the theoretical 
value of the horizontal truss. So this is the table for the data collection. You need to write the width, and the height, and table 1A is for the photo frame subjected to vertical load. So all the data are given. This is for incremental load, and this is for decremental load, so horizontal thrust. You need to calculate the average, and then you calculate the theoretical horizontal thrust. And table 1B is for photo frame subjected to horizontal load, W2. And all the data are given, you need to calculate the average of the experimental horizontal thrust. Then calculate the theoretical horizontal thrust. And last, for table 1C, is the photo frame subjected to combination of vertical load and horizontal load. So these are the data given. Uh, this is for decremental load. Again, you calculate the average. And then you calculate the theoretical uh, horizontal thrust. And for the data analysis, so for each test 1A, 1B, and 1C, so plot the graph of experimental horizontal thrust, each test, and theoretical horizontal thrust, H theory, versus load. And based on the diagram, on the uh, graph, um, calculate the discrepancy percentage of the horizontal thrust using this relationship. And last, for the discussion and conclusion, we need to discuss the result of horizontal thrust based on the comparison made and answer all of these questions. Alright, that's the end of this video. Thank you and all the best for your lab work.